Hello, my name is Matt Glaves and I'm a solutions engineer with Drobo. One of the most common questions our customers ask is how do they know which Drobo will fit their performance requirements? When selecting a Drobo SAN, it's important to understand the IOPS requirements for your proposed deployment. IOPS, or inputs and outputs per second, measure how many read and write commands a SAN can complete in a second. Every Drobo model has been benchmarked by our engineers to determine its real-world IOPS capacity. Selecting a model with an insufficient capacity rating for your deployment can result in sluggish performance under heavy loads. The easiest way to ensure a successful SAN rollout is to obtain your current IOPS requirements. These statistics can be easily obtained from current servers that will be migrated to the Drobo. These servers can be either physical or virtual. If this is a new deployment and no servers exist, a Drobo solutions engineer, such as myself, can assist in estimating the requirements based on your proposed configuration. I will walk through the steps required to obtain IOPS from Windows, ESX, and Linux hosts. On Windows hosts, Performance Monitor can be used to obtain the IOPS rating. Start by going to Administrative Tools and selecting the Performance Monitor. Before we start, we'll delete the default monitor for CPU monitoring by highlighting it and pressing the red X. Click the green plus to add a performance monitor. Scroll through the available counters and expand the container labeled Logical Disk. Under Logical Disk, select Disk Transfers Per Second. Before clicking Add, verify that only the required hard disks are selected. If the entire server will be migrated to the Drobo, the total option should be selected. If only a single disk will be migrated to the Drobo, select only the volume that will be moved. In this example, the server is a file server and only the data stored in the E drive will be moved to the Drobo. Select Add to create the performance monitor and OK to finish the wizard. After adding the performance monitor, it's recommended that you leave it running for at least 24 hours. At the end of the sampling period, record the average and the maximum numbers displayed in the performance monitor. These are your average and maximum IOPS requirements for the selected disks. For VMware deployments, the vCenter server provides data store performance statistics. If you are running the free version of ESXi, Drobo recommends downloading the trial version of vCenter server as it makes gathering IOPS over a longer duration practical. Load the vSphere client and connect to the vCenter server. Select the ESX host with the data stores to be monitored and then click the Performance tab. Once on the Performance tab, click the Advanced button and then select the Chart Options link. Under the Disk category, select the Real-Time Reporting Timeframe. In the Objects window, ensure that only the data stores that will be moved to the Drobo are checked. In the Counters window, click None to uncheck all counters and then check the box Command Issued. Commands Issued is VMware's terminology for IOPS. Once all the reporting options have been selected, click OK to begin gathering the statistics. The average and maximum IOPS for each data store are displayed in the chart below the graph. It is recommended that the statistics are gathered for at least 24 hours to obtain sufficient data. For Linux hosts, the IOSTAT tool can be used to obtain IOPS statistics. While IOSTAT is an available package for all major Linux distributions, it is not typically installed by default. For this example, I'm using an Ubuntu-based system and will install the package using apt. For other distributions, use the search functionality of your package manager to find and install IOSTAT. For Ubuntu, we will use the command apt space install space sysstat. After the package is installed, run the command IOSTAT space and the number 15. This will return statistics for all disks refresh every 15 seconds. A longer interval, such as 300 seconds, will make gathering data over a longer period of time more practical. The TPS column shows IOPS for each disk and results should be recorded and averaged over the polling period. This provides the average and peak IOPS for Linux-based systems.